In this video, I will show you how I pick up and knit stitches for the v-neck trim in my ice breaker top. This process is slightly different than when I pick up and knit for other necklines because we'll be working a mitered rib stitch. This means that we have a center stitch at the v-neck point and we'll be working decreases on either side of this point during our ribbing and this creates the symmetrical angled sides that you see here. But before all that, we first need to pick up and knit the stitches around our neck opening here. I instruct you in step one of this section to first pick up and knit your back neck bound off stitches. So first, let's turn the work and make sure that the back neck is facing us. And we're gonna be wanting to pick up into the bound off stitches. They're very easy to identify because as you can see here, see these V's, they're sort of sideways V's. These are all your bound off stitches. So we're gonna wanna start with the right end, the first one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert one of my needle tips into that V and I wanna put it into both legs of the V just like that. Then I wanna take my working yarn and I wanna leave a nice long tail probably at least 10 inches or so. And I'm gonna drape it over the top of the needle like this, and then just pull the loop through. There we go. So we have picked up and knit one stitch. Now to do the next one, we're gonna insert our needle into that sideways V into both legs, just like that. Wrap the yarn around the needle and knit it. Just like that. So I'm gonna do that to each of these bound off stitches. However, I note in the step one that the goal is to pick up 26 stitches, but we have 27 bound off back neck stitches. So what you wanna do is pick up and knit half of them, so 13, and then we'll skip one and then pick up and knit the other 13. Okay, so I'm picking up number 13. So then I'm just going to skip this next one and go into this one. So then I'll pick up and knit 13 more. Once you've picked up and knit your total of 26 stitches, we're done with step one and we can move on to step two, which says to pick up and knit one stitch at the top of the left shoulder. So we just wanna pick up one stitch somewhere right around here. I don't wanna pick up a very edge stitch, but something like, you know, right here I would pick up. And just like we did with the back neck, I'm gonna pick up um, both legs of the stitch. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to step three. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and place a removable marker on this needle because in step three, I'm just gonna turn the work a little bit. We're going to be picking up and knitting. This is our left front. And we're gonna be picking up around three stitches for every four rows, making sure that the total number of stitches picked up is 29. Um, so to make it easier for counting purposes, I wanna, it's helpful to place a marker right there. And I do make note that if for some reason you have a hard time picking up exactly 29 stitches, you can pick up a different number, but it just needs to be a multiple of four plus one. So when picking up along a vertical edge like this, if you've ever seen any of my other videos where I talk about this, Normally I say to, um, you don't wanna pick up into the very edge. So you don't wanna be picking up right here or right here. Normally I recommend going one stitch in and picking up, so following the, again, like the shape of the V going into both legs 
of the V going downwards. However, in this particular top, because of the bulkiness of the yarn, I actually found that I preferred the look when I only picked up one leg instead of both legs. That was just my personal preference. So this is gonna be a little bit different than some of my other videos that are similar about picking up neckline stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the first one. I'm not gonna go into this very edge. I'm gonna go into, so look for the V. So here's a V. Here's a V, here's a V, and I like to hold my left hand. I sort of like pinch the fingers together so it outlines the Vs that I'm gonna, I am wanna be picking up into. But again, instead of picking up into both legs, I'm just gonna go into the, um, the inner leg right there. So that's picked up and knit one stitch. Then I'm gonna go into the next one and then into the next one. So I've just picked up and knit three stitches in a row. And because the pattern says to pick up approximately three stitches for every four rows, that means you pick up three like that, and then you skip one. So I'm gonna skip this one and go into this one and then pick up three in a row again. So here, here, and here. And then again, we'll skip this one and do three in a row, starting with this one. So we'll just continue in this manner until we get to right before the center stitch. Okay, so I've just picked up a knit 28. I have one more to do. Okay, so I have picked up a knit 29 stitches from the shoulder down to here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this marker so I can use it in just a minute. But now we've finished step three and can move on to step four. So step four says to transfer the one center stitch from the removable marker to an empty needle and then knit it. So let's do that part first. I'm gonna take my empty needle. I'm gonna just take this stitch and sometimes you might just need to pull up on it a little bit. I'm going to put the stitch on the needle and then remove the marker. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and knit that stitch just like that. Then the next part of that step says to reattach the marker right underneath the stitch. And we're gonna be calling this the marked center stitch moving forward. So this is the stitch we just knit and we want to put the marker right underneath it. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to that loop right there and I'll secure it just like that. So now we can move on to step five, which is similar to step three, in that we need to pick up and knit 29 stitches up to the shoulder, approximately three stitches for every four rows. So just like I had done on the left side, I'm gonna place a removable marker here just to make counting easier. And just like I had done on the left side, first I wanna find my row of V stitches. So again, we don't wanna be going into that very edge we wanna be going into, here's the V right next to it. And I wanna be picking up and knitting into the inner leg of that V. So the first V I'm gonna go into is this one right here. So here's both legs of it. I'm just gonna go into that leg, pick up and knit, and then do the same with the next one. And then the next one. So now I've done three in a row. So then we're going to skip this one and then go into this one. Just like we did on the left side, I'm just gonna continue in this manner till I get up to the top and make sure that I've picked up 29 stitches. And if you have to stray from the three stitches for every four rows ratio a little bit, um, that's that's definitely okay. So the, the goal is to make sure that you have those 29 stitches 
by the time you get to the top. Okay, so I'm just about the top. I just picked up 28, so I just have one more to do. And I just wanted to point up up here. The stitches are gonna appear a lot looser up here than in some of the other areas, and that's definitely okay. If there's any small holes once you're done with the ribbing in this section, that's why I had you um, join the yarn with a really long tail, because you can cinch things up and fix any holes that might appear. So I just have one more stitch to pick up a knit. So again, I don't want to pick up in an area. Um, I don't want to pick up in an area where it's going to cause a big hole. But I think if I pick up into, let's pick up into that loop right there. I think that'll be perfect. Okay, so we've picked up our 29 stitches and then we can move on to the last step, step six, which is to pick up and knit one stitch at the top of the right shoulder. So um, just like we had done on the left side, I'll just find a stitch. Um, let's go into this one right here. Pick that up, yep, that looks good. And if for some reason you picked that up and then you decide, oh, I'm not sure if that was a great spot, you could just take the stitch off just like that and try again. So, you know what, I'm gonna go in, into both of those loops right there. There we go, that looks, that looks pretty good. And so then the last part of step six is to place a marker for beginning of round. And then you'll be ready to start the rib stitch. Now, one last thing I wanted to point out, I'm just gonna move this so we can look at the center stitch again. And actually I can remove that marker I had placed for counting purposes. But here is that marked center stitch. And so one thing I just wanted to mention is that in the rows of the working rib stitch section, it will reference this mark stitch. It'll say either to work in pattern to the mark stitch or maybe to two stitches before or three stitches before. So this marker just always represents the stitch that's right above it, that center stitch. So if for example, in round three, it will say to um, work in the rib stitch to two stitches before that marked center stitch. You'll work in your rib stitch until you get to this point right here because that's two stitches before this marked center stitch. So that is how you pick up and knit stitches for the V-neck trim in my icebreaker top.